What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be finally tackling the front end build on the truck. By front end build, I really mean we're doing ball joints, wheel bearings, U-joints, called like a steering knuckle oil seal or something like that. Link down in the description. As for most of what you're going to need to complete this job, we are also doing the upgraded axle dusk shield um, cover thing, whatever it's called. But first, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, drop your comments down below guys. And if there's things you've seen work better or worse for you, drop those comments down below. We're gonna go over the tools and the parts needed for this. I'm gonna put somewhere here on screen where the actual work begins. We're gonna start with the wheel off and just starting to tackle the job. Most of you guys are gonna know how to take the wheel off. Okay, I did forget a tool that I need to list and that's a Torx bit set. We need a T27 and that's to get these three Torx bits around to get your hub out. For your two brake bolts, the one holds the shoe and the other holds the actual caliper. You need a 21 that holds the shoe to the steering knuckle and a 16 millimeter will get the caliper off. So, so just so you guys can see, 16 millimeter, 21, and then there's two more down below. All right, so we're gonna use this to hang this brake caliper up and I guess we're just gonna hook it onto Just gonna hook it onto our coil spring here. <clears throat> okay, so here's your rotor. I didn't show this. If the other side gets stuck, I'll show you why. Basically, I had to hit this with my sledgehammer. So I hit in between the studs. Wasn't if you aren't replacing your wheel bearing, be careful doing that because you don't want to damage them. Like if you're just doing a brake job and you're replacing this rotor, just hit the rotor. It comes off one, it comes off faster. Two, what do you care? You're getting rid of this. Uh, but these have less than 5,000 miles on them, so I'm not getting rid of this. So the next thing we're going to do is this guy has to come off. So cotter pin pulls out this bolt, and we're going to take this out. And now here's a good consideration is as this dust shield is a rusty, rusty pile of crap. I don't have time to wait to get a new one, so we're going to run it, which kind of sucks. But I'm going to have a link for you guys to replace this down in the description all right so this guy here this is your tie rod end 21 millimeter castle nut here we took the cotter pin out and basically what i do is i leave that castle nut on there to protect the threads so i just leave it a little over top of it like that and i hit that give it a few light hits it won't really damage this ball joint and it'll drop this down it'll catch here so this doesn't fall and hit stuff and you didn't mess up your threads. You don't want to be just banging on it. So now we can turn this guy as we need to because our wheel bearing studs or nuts are behind here. It's a bolt on there. Yeah, bolt. So there's four of them. So what we did here, this is part of your vacuum line. We just took pliers. And as I worked this back and forth with this hand, I just started pulling up and it comes off. And actually when I did that, a bunch of rust and crap came out so down the line in the near future I'm probably gonna have to replace this guy now I do not currently have my Allen sets readily accessible to do this but if you're replacing this whole wheel bearing anyway which if you're doing ball joints I recommend taking a good hard look at your wheel bearings for the wire in the meantime I just clipped it quick so this wire because the new but new one comes with it already so we're not reusing this sensor anyway we have a brand new one now what we did here so we took the three studs out or the t27s i believe they were and i started working this loose we used a little bit of penetrating oil wd-40 works good for something like this if you have rust or more rust like this does i should have some pb blaster but i don't however i do think that works better in this scenario and then again since we're replacing these studs we don't really care if these get damaged and by replacing the studs i mean the new wheel bearing has them in so we don't need to do anything with these but we just started smacking it around a little bit and then i took a pry bar in and started working it in and you'll see here in a second there is a big old o-ring all right and then there it is we're gonna get our snap ring pliers out and get in here so you're gonna look in here and you'll see your two You'll see the areas that you need to use these on.
All right, so here's the C clip or snap ring, whatever you want to call it, that holds it, holds your axle in there. Got so some dirt here. Anyway, so you got your two holes up there, and all you're gonna do is put these in. And I needed two hands to spread this. This sucker is tight and squeeze, and you just start trying to pull it out. So there's four bolts behind here. I'll show them to you on the next one, or when we get this off, I'll show it. But basically you turn this and you can see your four bolts. And again, you just turn it the other way. Now watch your brake here. You don't wanna let this drop, so just be careful. So I just move, hold stuff out of the way. Also, if you need to, this, your axle will, will turn. So just because you use this and it won't turn, it's because it's not locked in. So you can turn it to position it where you need so you have room like on one of them over there I had to turn this to get it lined up enough so now we need to start getting this thing out which is gonna basically I've always had to beat these things out they don't just come out I don't know if that's coming through quite how hard I'm, I mean, I'm putting some something behind That's why we got two jack stands up today. So it's slowly starting to there, but you definitely got to really give it some good hits here. Now uh, we got that side. I'm going to start pounding on this side in the same way. All right, as you can see, that was a little bit of a workout. Uh, and this is obviously pretty rusty here. So we had to move this around quite a bit. So I'm gonna say this is a good time to check on how you have this up here and make sure it's still secure. You wanna take your pry bar behind here. And so I straighten this out. And now you start. All right, so I had to call in Josh to come give me a hand here. And while I kept trying to pry from the back, I believe I've already shown that, basically getting a pry bar back here and trying to pull this forward. What Josh did is he turned this to the side and he took, uh, not sure if he used his crowbar or pry bar, and basically just beat this seal out. So this is now all out. Again, we are replacing this, so we're not worried about the condition of this seal. I highly recommend, like these are like eight or 10 bucks, something like that, these aren't crazy expensive. Uh, just replace them. It's not worth the hassle. Uh, again, just replace them. Now you do want to be careful as you pull this out. You don't want to damage it. It'll drop on the, it's going to drop on the other end. So as you're pulling, all right, there is a cotter pin up top here. All right. So we have, after you get the cotter pin out up here, we have a one and one eighth socket up top and the 33 millimeter down below. And once you get them loose, it's time to start hitting with a hammer. So basically I get them high enough so I don't mushroom the tops of these two. And then we start using our pickle forks and hitting the top of these to get them to drop. So I'm gonna go get this all set up and show you what we do.
this ball joint sits in here loosely and there's a piece that presses in. So as I'm hitting here, that guy's popping up. Here's the seal. Now this, this boot was inside here. You don't have to remove it. I was trying to figure out exactly what the Ford one had, like how it was set up. So anyway, I did take this out first. You don't need to. So this sits in here like this. And I just took a pry bar and just started hitting against it. Like, so it'd come across this edge. Yeah, it was hitting that, it's fine. Uh, and then it just popped right out. So it really didn't take much. Now I did use my neighbor who was very kind and lent me a huge snap on pry bar. Anyway, so we cleaned out this tube pretty good. I scraped this surface, which is where the new one's gonna go. And we're gonna start putting that in. Now, I didn't get the specific tool to install that. So let's see what we got. We're gonna get this on here. So now here's the new one that's gonna sit here. And like I said, I don't have the installation tool, but I have all these. This is an adapter for my uh, ball joint press. Like I said, they do make a tool that makes it nicer. You can actually use the tool will come through the steering knuckle. So if you have your wheel bearing out in the axle shaft, you don't need to drop your ball joints necessarily to do this. Anyway, so U joints are all out, ball joints pressed out. This press, well worth the money. Again, you'll need a you'll need an adapter kit, but best press I've ever used worked like a charm. Just press, you know, put the impact on it, cranked out the ball joint like nothing. It was awesome. Made me very happy. Think in the scheme of things this is showing up better so here's your u-joint now this has the caps off mine are all messed up with a bunch of junk in there but anyway so here's one of the caps and they just press on over top so now there's a clip here that holds all of this in so that this doesn't come up and that there's very little movement in here some have a clip that goes on top and presses it down in like on the drive shaft that's how that is here is one of the caps as i was getting it off didn't go quite my way took a fair amount of work and thinking to get it out and a lot of pv blaster because that cap that broke got stuck was stuck in here i don't know if that's showing up but we've prepped all these surfaces so we lightly sanded them got all the rust out, any dings you put in while doing this, you can now fix, uh, you know, sand out so you get the next one in smoothly. Also, I cleaned up this surface. This is for a gasket. Well, this is for the oil seal for your vacuum line. Also on the ball joint side, so here's, here's your steering knuckle. We cleaned up all this, any mating surface. I quick just went over. I didn't, be careful, especially if you're using, like I'm using a die grinder for a lot of this except inside those obviously this isn't fitting with my setup i have you just want to get everything lightly sanded and make sure all your surfaces are neat this one on the front this looked terrible i don't know if you guys remember from the one and i didn't clean this perfect like i didn't go crazy i just cleaned it up so that we can get a good seal here you don't want to remove too much material i'm sure there's plenty built into this but you don't want to remove too much also same in here what i could remove i did you know i didn't go nuts but i did try to clean everything up and then i did wipe everything down with just a paper towel get all the extra gunk out just clean up all your attachment points so everything goes together nicely and if when you need these things are all going to need serviced again so if i do spend a little extra time cleaning it up the next time i need to do this my prep time will be very little because it'll all already be done and nice from what I do here. This will also come apart very nicely when I need to service it again. So ball joints we're going to press in probably outside. I'll show you guys that. We're going to do our U-joints in here. So as that U-joint's in there, now these are held in. I don't have any down here. Again, there's a C-clip that holds it in place on the in here. So what you'll see like you can see I was hammering away at this. I don't like this method because I don't like that it kind of messes it up, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You might need heat, so have a torch. Uh, propane works well, map gas if you have the right stuff for it. 
but I don't see a need for it. Propane's worked well for me and Josh in the past. But you're literally gonna hit here and all around. Now, sometimes you'll have to hit on the other side, get a socket that fits in that hole nicely and hit to get it. So the other thing I wanna say is, uh, I think grease is preferred. You wanna have some kind of lubricant to help keep all this stuff nice. I just have WD-40 right now, oil. Again, I think grease is preferred, but you wanna have something that's gonna help protect this metal and make this whole process go easier. So we're gonna start with the one shaft we're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna get a little of this on here and hopefully it goes well. So this does have a Zerx fitting in it. These are serviceable to an extent, obviously. When they fail, they do fail, but you can grease these up. And it has these C-clips in here. You guys hopefully can see that. And they press and sit with the open part facing in. And there's a groove in here. I hate doing U-joints, guys. Because <laughs> they scare me because there's um there's chance for you to mess this up. So, we're going to take two sides off at a time. One other thing is some people actually will tape sides they're not messing with. So they stay on, that's common, just tidbit. If you're doing this for the first time and you're nervous, I'm doing it for the second time and I'm nervous, so. Now as you pull them off, you wanna check and make sure all the bearings are good. We're good on that one. So you're gonna hold it up and you're gonna set your bearings in. Oh, that wasn't easy. So, now that we have that, all right, now that bearing's not going anywhere. So, again, we're going to press up. So I don't know if this is showing up, but there's a groove in here and that's what your C-clip sits in and holds all this in place for you. On this top one, it's gonna be relatively easy to get on. Now that guy ain't going anywhere. So then careful with this one, we're gonna to have to hit a little. Okay, now next, we obviously have two more to do, but I've marked this side and this side so I know exactly how this was oriented to keep it as close to in balance as possible. Now, one of the first things you're gonna need is a ball joint press. Now, this is a new one for me. I have an old one. The next thing you're gonna want is a nice set of pickle forks. This isn't the most expensive one. You know, it has an attachment to go into an air hammer or a chisel and uh, basically it has three different sizes. This is what I typically use and I just hit on the end of that with a hammer. If you are taking your ball joints off guys, everyone complains about Ford vacuum lines on their four wheel drive system not working. This tool here is what you need. Huge shout out to a good friend of mine, Hammerdown Motorsports. This guy's got a YouTube channel, check him out. He is uh, lending me this tool, he is a good friend and a huge shout out to him. He is always supporting the channel. I can't thank him enough. You will need a pry bar. This is uh, just a cheap one from Advanced Auto. Again, link for pry bar down in the description. A good set of snap ring pliers. Now I have cheaper ones and on the 05 and up axles, I've had a hard time getting the snap ring off. So I did spend a little more money, got a nice set. Other mandatory tools, guys, obviously you're gonna want a plier set, a screwdriver set, and just basic uh, socket set. We'll try to list all the sizes I use here. But again, I'm gonna find some stuff down below that's budget friendly. It's not gonna be snap on quality. I'm gonna find some decent stuff for you guys and link down in the description. If you're just starting your tool collection, then this will be a good way to kind of pick up a few things and it will allow you to grow your collection down the road. And then eventually what happens is you stop needing to buy stuff every time you do a job. You can just go to the toolbox, grab it and go. And then you're really saving a lot of money versus paying someone to do this. Now, optional tools, guys. Now, these are things that just make it nice. Again, I'm at a point in my tool collection where I really like some of this stuff and I have a few optional things, but for the first long time that I was wrenching, I didn't have any of these, so you don't need them by any means, but they just make it nice. First, anyone that's following the channel knows I'm a big fan of Milwaukee tools, so we have one of their battery ratchets here. 
And of course their impact gun will take the lugs off and we will get the wheel bearings out or uh, ball joints out hopefully with this as well. And hopefully this looks as easy as my mechanic friends make it look when they do it. And last guys, this is not necessary, but I do advocate getting a decent torque wrench. You don't need to have the best of the best. This is just a cobalt one and it's done a nice job for me. But a lot of this stuff does have torque specs. Your lug nuts have torque specs. You see the guys on the forums that break, uh, break studs off their wheel bearing assembly? That's because they didn't have a torque wrench when they torqued them down. Not optional. Energy drink. Okay guys, so now we're gonna get to the parts needed. We're gonna go over OEM versus Moog, Timken, a few other things quick before we get into the parts again. I'll note somewhere, maybe here, this area, uh, where the actual part list starts. So OEM versus aftermarket guys, if you're going with aftermarket stuff, pick higher quality stuff. Don't cheap out on this job. These are big, heavy trucks made to do work. If you buy cheap crap parts, they're gonna wear out. You're gonna do this job twice in one year, and this is not a job you wanna do twice in one year. That being said, there's a lot of parts. I know for a fact, so wheel bearings, you guys are gonna see some Timken stuff up here. Timken makes Ford OEM wheel bearings. They make a ton of manufacturers OEM wheel bearings. If you buy a Ford Motorcraft wheel bearing for one of these trucks, it's a Timken part. Do not let anyone tell you different. You can pay about half for Timken versus what you're going to get OEM for. Also, Timken has really good quality standards, so I trust them. I've used them a lot. Josh has used them. Uh, great part, great product, excuse me. I highly recommend them. So people are going to ask what brand I recommend, and I want to say this, OEM is great stuff. So if you know who's making the OEM stuff, buy that because it's good stuff. I don't care what anybody says. For suspension parts, the Ford factory stuff is nice stuff. They even have nice brakes. I use their brakes on the front and they work really well. It's just nice stuff with a good warranty. That being said, some of it is super expensive and I, uh, quite frankly, I, I don't think the value for some stuff that's out there is in favor of OEM. That being said, I have bought some OEM parts. Again, I'm gonna call the Timken OEM because if you open it, a lot of times it'll be marked Timken on the wheel bearing from Ford in a Motorcraft box. So I know that that's OEM, but I paid about half price for that. Subject to change for those things as far as price-wise goes. I'm considering the steering knuckle, oil seal I think it's called, and the dust cover for the axle assembly, OEM quality if not better. Moog parts, we got Moog ball joints here. This is kind of your whole parts list, so we got Wheel bearing assemblies, they'll come with the ABS sensor in there already. We have the seals, the dust cover for the axle assemble, assembly, and the oil seal that helps the vacuum line in your steering knuckle so that your auto, auto locking hubs actually work, which is why we have the big heavy tool. Ball joints, I've had decent luck with Moog. I wouldn't say I love them. I have tried Raybestos, they did, eh. I think they kind of took a giant dump too early on my white truck, so I don't recommend them. There's XRF I've heard good stuff about. I forget the ones that are like six, $700, they're rebuildable. Here's my thing with that, is uh, they're prob they still fail at like the same rate. It's just I have a much more expensive one I can rebuild versus just buying a new one. Um, so I'm, I don't know, the jury's still out on that. I've thought about getting them and reviewing them on maybe the white truck, um, just to see, because I know the white truck's not going anywhere ever. I love it, it's, it, it won't go. Um, so anyway, we have ball joints. Again, guys, link down in the description. Now down in the description, I'm gonna look for 99 through 04 parts and I'm gonna look for 05 through 15 because essentially the 05 through 15 is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, as far as 99 through 04, I'm not sure, but mo this video, this whole playlist it's in will pretty much cover all of it. But I did go with Moog ball joints. Now U-joints. Um, one, these are expensive uh, suckers. U-joints, I went with Ford, and that is because I didn't have the Dana Spicer part number. So Ford uses Dana Spicer U-joints, so just buy them. Now I will say, um, that is basic, like I've never heard anyone say there's a better U-joint than Dana out there. So as far as mood goes, guys, I, I've heard mixed reviews. I, had, I don't hear anything bad about Dana Spicer U-joints. And truth be told, if I could have just got Dana parts for everything and a kit, uh, I definitely would have. Except for obviously wheel bearings because Timken makes them, but you guys get what I'm saying. Here 
is the part number. We got 5C3Z3249BA. That is the Ford part number for my U-joint up front. Call your dealer and have them run your VIN. Apparently there's like three or four options. Um, this, these are expensive. These are like a $95 option. Now these do have, this does say Spicer on it. It doesn't have a Spicer part number. Oh, look at that, they're greasable. These ones are greasable. If you haven't done your brakes and you know they're gonna be due, this is a good time. Your whole brakes, your uh, everything needs to come off anyway. I can link a video down in the description here about doing brakes if you guys have questions. And any the tools you buy to do this job are more than enough because really all you need to do brakes is a socket set and uh, maybe a clamp. That's really it. And truthfully, if you have one of these, you can decompress the pistons in the brake. I don't do it that way. I just use a cheap C-clamp. It's a little easier to maneuver in your hand, but in theory, this would work just fine too to use uh, to push them back in. So I didn't say it earlier, but jack stand and jack, uh, you're gonna want them as well. So anyway, guys, that is it. We're gonna get going again. I'm gonna take get this truck jacked up, get it safe, uh, get the wheel off, and we're gonna basically start with the brakes. So anyway, guys, thank you, and uh, let's get started.